saw him earlier. I don't know if it's in as a setup, but it is going to be a Samus Ditto. Rhino against Orticle. White Samus against Black and Yellow Samus. Oh, no, we're going with the original colors. Okay. So this will be a good one. Prime Saga, of course, long pass, but that didn't stop these two players. It is going to be Samus against Samus. I think this is a button check. I know Samus neutral is weird, but it's not that strange. button check as we will be getting this one started in just a few moments. Sorry? Uh, the speaker attached to the TV uh, blew out, so I'm grabbing a replacement. They're just doing button check. Oh, okay. All right, so just a quick technical difficulties. We should be getting a new speaker for the main setup in just a moment. We do have a replacement, so it'll hopefully take a few more seconds, and we should be good to move on. Elsewhere in the bracket, Crudge currently facing off against Shu, Paper, and Matman waiting to fight off Aimer and Pitbull. Also waiting for an open setup. Super Nanny and Tyranks will be a particularly good one. Ketchup and Yoshiller. Interesting to see that Bowser Jr. Yoshi matchup that we see from really all fronts of SoCal. A lot of people just making those characters their own on really both sides. Also going on, Exia, who benefited from the DQ, currently facing off against Tempo, who we just saw defeat Lord Bahamut on stream a bit earlier. Charlie the King and Toast also waiting to face off. So it looks like we'll finally be getting this one started. Rhino Dude and Oracle, the White Samus against that really cool black and yellow as we see both get their charge shots started. It is going to be Rhino Dude who draws first blood. Another up air. Get him back to 55% as he greets his recovery down from the platform. Approaching fair will be the first damage on the board for Oracle, but this is really a matchup that can be a war of attrition at times. Oracle needs to hang back and a lot of the dangers of this matchup and any ditto in Smash Ultimate in particular is whatever you can do to go with a recovery to try and make up a deficit to try and close the gap, your opponent can do the exact same thing. And as obvious as that sounds, that's just something you have to take into account with your playstyle. Whatever punish you can get for an unsafe aerial, your opponent can do the exact same thing if you're trying to find the window for that punish in the first place. Oracle sitting at 92%, finally managed to regain the lead, and that does go through that side special. The charge shot has priority in this matchup. Rhino Dude, of course, all too aware, but he's going to be caught out. Did not expect Oracle to go forward across the stage, but the bravery pays off. Oracle draws first blood. And now he's just looking to maintain the lead. It's him that's playing a bit more defensively. He manages to undo the charge in time and hold up the shield. Catches him with a charge shot. And Rhino's actually going to go forward with a bear. Zare will poke him and try and corner him a little bit, but Oracle will retreat back to center stage. A lot of what Oracle can do is, even if he's quote-unquote running away, which he isn't really doing, he's still maintaining some of his neutral presence. It's not as if he's trying to time him out. He's going to leave that trail of morph balls in his wake, which makes it so difficult to approach, especially with a character that doesn't necessarily have an amazing amount of ground speed like Samus. What Samus can do is shift her hurt box back and forth, not only by the use of the Morph Ball, but also with approaching and retreating fair. But that time, the up special out of shield is going to be the first stock on. Rhino finally managing to get himself on the board. Trade of side special there. Oracle is going to be the first one to have a fully charged neutral special. 
down air, but the bat is just so negative. And it's almost positive even on hit. Up air through the platform, though, will put Rhino onto 130 and another one onto 139. And he just did too low for the recovery. Rhino down to his final stock. Oracle looking very strong here. Haven't seen either player go for that tether grab too much, especially since both players know the ditto here. They're playing this one at a distance, as they really should be. A lot of these projectiles can be launched at what would outrange any tether grab in this game. Samus is included. Nearly capitalized off of the more fall on top of the platform, but Rhino just retreating back, getting that charge shot ready. And before the shield can come out, already got another one going. Protecting himself well and recovers, but jumps right into the fair from Oracle. And as he hoped to get a full charge, he used the jump early. Carry two hits of the fair there and wanted to go finish it off with the charge shot, but Rhino definitely just ducking under that. Broken fair will put Oracle into 122, and he fell out of the fair, but got the back air seconds after. Oracle down to his last stock, but Rhino sitting at 121, gonna have a high mountain to climb if he wants to take this game one. Finally gonna get something off of the grab. Down throw to two up airs. It is gonna be Oracle's charge shot who lands. Rhino dude still very much in this. Up air out of shield and the back air actually will put him off stage. He's gonna have to weave back to avoid him and recovers high. Up special, is that gonna do it? It is Rhino gonna be out of that final stock at 165 after the hit, after a great roll positioning read from Oracle. He takes game one and takes it in the ditto. It was a bit closer than I think both of them anticipated after that first stock was just evaporated so easily, but Oracle hangs on and we'll have to see how this set commences as we go to game two. As we just adjust the lighting a bit on these players. It is a new camera, so you might be able to see some of those settings pop up on the screen. But as we go to game two, it is that same light gray and black. Rhino Dude against Oracle who took game one. This game two starting off very much like the first game. Just a bunch of trades sending back and forth those side specials, some of those missiles. Fell out of the fair putt. That gave him the opportunity for the up air afterwards. Rhino will get a returning fair, but he's still nearly 100% in the red here. And we're going to get something going with the Couple consecutive up airs, a third as well. Not quite gonna carry him off the top of the up special, but that was a good extension. Hops over the charge shot this time, and a bit hopeful with that down air there, but Rhino's not gonna cost him too much. They're on top of the platform, meanwhile, and another one he was hoping to land. Forward tilt from Rhino. And that down smash actually is going to carry him to the other side of the stage. Oracle, like game one, draws first blood. That will pop him up though. And I think Rhino wanted to trap him on top of the platform. Maybe he was looking for that up air and just misinputted a fair because that would be pretty ambitious across the stage, even with the fair. Maybe not worth the risk, but does manage to get him with that charge shot, even with a character such as Samus' weight, tied for the ninth heaviest in the game with Terry Bogard, is gonna be enough to take him off the side. Samus can live for a while, and a lot of her neutral game is not to be underestimated in the wake of some of these projectiles, but the way that each projectile sort of complements each other cancels out in this ditto. He's gonna get something going with a down throw to Nair, after he misses the tech on top of the platform, he's gonna get another aerial afterwards. Rhino starting to bring this back. After that up smash, he's gonna punch him with the back air as he goes beside the platform. He gets that roll as well, but still gonna be living. 
narrowly misses the charge shot too. Oracle had shrunk her body a little bit just through the use of that morph ball. Rhino's fair though will put Oracle off stage and hoping to just be a thorn in his side. That is a re-grab. So he probably could have approached, but can just do it with a tilt instead. Rhino, meanwhile, getting hit with that charge shot. Oracle not wanting to fall too far behind. As we get some of these partial charges going. Able to get that off the hit stun too with a grab. Excellent work from Rhino Duke, knowing his distances. And the bear on top of the platform will advance him into the other direction. Oracle just hoping to land very well done. Just a tricky mix up. Able to jump over and Rhino conditioned him for the read, but he's gonna get his going. And now Oracle has finally got Rhino down to 0% on his final stock. That was really good from Rhino a moment ago because you saw he wanted to condition him to jump, which he did perfectly, but just got his timing that slightest bit wrong. I don't know if he anticipated the full hop or the short hop. And whichever one he was going for just didn't manage to get. Rhino's judge shot is going to come out on top. Caught another time. Oracle sitting at 165. Another morph ball going to make contact. Still living through. Mistech on top of the platform, but does not manage to capitalize. And after just overextending there, Rhino finds the clutch back air afterwards to tie this setup at a game apiece. This one is going to a decisive game three. Excellent adaptations from Rhino and Oracle to just capitalize on some of each other's habits. If one of them was going for a fair off the mistech on top of the platform, maybe just don't pick an option. Just lay low, hope your hitbox sort of shifts below whatever option they were going for. And you can punish that fair as Rhino Dude just did with the backer afterwards, which won him the second game. This time we're going to be moving on to Town and City. The first two games played on PS2, so a change in venue here. Both of them just charging their charge shots. Rhino towards the ledge on top of the platform. Oracle on the other side of the stage, just on the ground. He's gonna poke with his air, but quick dash attack will meet him afterwards from Oracle. Another fair. Rhino mixing up his recovery well, and that getup attack. I like the decision to actually go for the getup attack because if Oracle was shifting himself that morph ball actually would have just gotten him out of danger. And at only 5%, that's a trade you're willing to take instead of what really could be a harder punish for any other getup attack. Oh, missed tech though from Oracle. An uncharacteristic error is gonna take that first talk. He was only at 75% before that interaction. And just like that, Rhino Dude is gonna hop into the lead, but the down throw into Nair. Extending that a little bit. Poke him off the platform with his air. Another fair, but interrupted by the missile. Commanding Ariel will go over the charge shot this time, getting Tether to make it back and rolls around the missile. Used that controllable missile as well actually got him into it. just delaying himself off stage and taking that opportunity to use that mid-air charge is going to be caught as well. So with the help of all that rage, Oracle now sitting at 90%. Rhino still yet to lose a stock. Finally going to be caught at ledge as he returns. Oracle in danger of going down a second stock now. Using the morph ball to just get over that up air out of the range of the up smash. Fair as well, finally. Oracle gets that first stock on from Rhino Dude, but at what cost? Over two minutes in, he's already 143% down. And through this projectile of Morph Balls. Rolls right into that down smash two and meets him at the ledge. A full stock up from Rhino Dude now. He is sailing through this game three. And he finished strong. Fair as you go forward. 
down throw to Farrick, just not gonna be in the percent window. Covering Melon gets that off of the down air too. Reads the jump well, and has the charge out on top of the platform that Fair could have finished it off. Oracle was just inches away from losing this set here, but with Rhino setting at only 43% on his second stock, another interaction might be able to do it. Fair nearly doing it as well. The average size side blast zones on Town and City not helping his cause. Up special, is that gonna do it? Excellent DI to the corner from Oracle. He's living, but not after that up air. Rhino Dude with a two stock to complete this set. And after a shaky beginning to game one, and then equally shaky beginning to game two, found his footing well within the ditto, and his adaptations just turned out to be superior, is gonna be moving on with a clean two one over Oracle. And a bit of an upset as well. I know Oracle was seated to make top 16 losers side, but he's gonna have a much longer route if he wants to make it that far this time. And just a quick exchange between the two players as we get this one going. 